Okay, so we are live now. Thank you, everyone. It's our third expert talk today. We have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Letizia Singanotto from Italian University Line. Thank you to all partners for being here and thank you to all attendees and all students and colleagues that might be following us from YouTube. I give the floor to Dr. Patankar from Shivaji University, one of our partners at Edu Reform Project. Uh, yes, the, the floor is yours, Pratiba. Thank you. Thank you, Sela. Uh, good afternoon to all foreign partners and good evening to all Indian partners. Today, expert talk is related to our Edu Reform project, which is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. The project is entitled as Mitigate the impact of fourth industrial revolution on Indian society. The final aim of EJU reform is to promote consciousness and to empower Indian society, Indian future, and in service secondary school teachers to mitigate the expected societal impact of the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is a storm is a technological storm which is paving the way we live, work, and are governed. So school teachers, teacher educators, and teachers at all levels of education have to face this storm and get acquainted with the innovative teaching and learning technology. For more visibility and dissemination of this project, series of expert talks will be organized. And this is third one. So first of all, I warmly welcome the resource person, Dr. Letizia. She is from Italy and a part of Edu Reform project. I also welcome you all. I'm very happy to introduce the resource person, Dr. Letizia Singanotto. Madam is a full-time researcher at National Institute for Documentation, Innovation, and Educational Research, Italy. She is professor of English at University Telematica Degree Study, Italian University Line. She holds PhD in Synchronic, Diachronic, and Applied Linguistics. She has far reaching experience in teaching and research in co and continuous professional development for teachers, teacher trainers, heads of schools. She is a member of different working groups and scientific committees on content and language integrated learning and language teaching and learning both at national and international levels as the European Commission and Council of Europe, ECA. She has presented papers at national and international conferences and published articles and chapters in peer-reviewed journals and four volumes on content and language integrated learning. She is a reviewer and member of editorial board of different peer-reviewed journals and member of ECMA, pluriliteracy school centers. Main research areas are language learning and teaching, content and language integrated learning, technology enhanced language learning, school innovation, teacher training. Dr. Letizia will address on innovating the learning and teaching model a case example from Italian schools, as she has far-reaching experience as a researcher and a teacher. Her talk will definitely enrich our experience in the field of research and teaching, particularly in the field of language teaching. In her talk, she will highlight strengths and challenges of reshaping the traditional top-down educational format in terms of time, setting, learning environment, organization, 
methodologies and strategies a case example from italian school will be mentioned the avant garde movement promoted by national institute for documentation innovation educational research involving more than 1200 schools nowadays so thank you very much with this brief introduction i take a leave and request dr lady zia to deliver her expert talk thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much for this great introduction and uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege for me to be here today as an uh, expert uh, with my expert talk i hope i will be able to give you some some hints some suggestions that could be uh, also relevant uh, within our project and in particular in the indian context so um, i'm going to talk about um, school innovation in particular about um, uh, innovating the teaching and learning model um, mentioning uh, an, an example, a case study in, in our schools, in, in Italian schools. Uh, but before uh, going into uh, details and into my um, uh, expert talk in particular, I would like to start with a, a brief, let's say, um, uh, poll. And I'm going to share my screen and ask you to take your uh, mobile phone or uh, even um, if, if you want, you can also um, open a new page in your, um, uh, in your, in your uh, computer. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to go to this website that is www.menti.com. I repeat, www.menti.com. And you will be asked to insert a code, and the code is 78241802. I repeat the code. Uh, maybe Clara, you you may want to uh, write it into the chat. The code is seven eight two four one eight zero seven. So with your mobile phone, it's very easy. You just um, uh, go to menti.com and then a code number is asked and then you can insert this number. But you, you can also open a new page in your browser. As we are talking about innovation, this is just an example of uh, how we can just um, in, in a lesson, in any lesson at school, at university, we, ju we can just um, use technologies to, to launch a poll, to launch a survey, which is uh, synchronous in this case. So you will be asked to uh, insert three words that um, can express your idea of innovation, of school innovation, of university innovation, of in, in general. Um, so uh, you should you should find after inserting the code, you should find three uh, fields to fill in with three words that could be three adjectives, three words, uh, uh, whatever you can. Yes, great. Whatever you can um, uh, just uh, uh, want to express, uh, what, whatever comes up to your mind when you when you think about uh, innovating the learning and teaching model. Okay, great. So we have um, some some responses. As you can see, um, we are going to create a sort of tag cloud. This is called a tag cloud, and it, it has become very popular among Italian schools during remote uh, teaching and learning due to lockdown. Um, as you can see, is is a very is is a very effective and and quick way to to get response from the students. For for uh, now, you you are pretending to be my students and just um, respond to my to my poll. Um, uh, and um, as you can see, the stack cloud um, is uh, continuously reshaping according to your inputs and um, the, the word which is in the middle and that is the, the biggest, as you can see, is the most popular one is the, 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 the word where uh, the majority of you um, uh, recognizes and maybe uh, associate uh, the idea of, of innovation. So it's creativity, of course, creativity is um, one of the most important ingredients of uh, innovation. But then we have also some a lot of very interesting inputs like um, individual approach. Uh, in, in, of course, we, we don't have time uh, today, but it would be interesting to, uh, to, to collect also your comments about the, um, your, your inputs about the words you are, you are inserting because uh, behind each word, of course, we know there's, there's a lot in your, in your, in your brain, in your, it's a sort of brainstorming, so it's very interesting. Um, 
individual approach, flexibility and uniqueness. Uh, yes, these are the three um, biggest um, words that of course are uh, keywords uh, in, in um, uh, innovation. Uh, then we have teaching methods, of course, we need to um, uh, innovate to reshape and rethink our teaching methods according to um, the needs of our students, of our learning environment. Uh, interdisciplinarity, uh, it's another important keyword. Yes, when we plan, when we work on cross-cultural interdisciplinary um, pathways, uh, it's a very effective way to innovate, to do something uh, new and, and, and engaging. Um, novel idea, yes, success, of course. Um, our aim is um, the uh, learning, the, uh, of course, the success of our students. Uh, adopting new ideas, yes, of course, passion. Passion is uh, essential. Uh, technology, of course, technology, uh, and, and we are we, we can see it now with technology we can do a lot and we've been using a lot of te technologies during uh, this this period during the um, this lockdown and uh, all the uh, flexible scenarios that uh, we've been experiencing. And, uh, but technology is, is, is not the only uh, key to innovation. Of course, it's one of the most important ingredients, but not the only one. Uh, then we have flipped. Yes, of course, when we, uh, for example, we um, adopt a flipped learning model, flipped learning classroom, uh, when, when you just uh, assign materials and videos to your students, you can um, innovate your teaching style, your teaching techniques, because you assign, you don't deliver uh, a top down lesson, uh, a, a lecture, let's say, but you have your students um, uh, learn the content in advance and then work with your students in class for example, um, about those videos, about, about those digital content. Uh, critical thinking, of course, we need to innovate our teaching and learning um, uh, approach uh, uh, in order to develop critical thinking. And uh, um, our, this is one of the um, main topics I'm, I'm going to cover um, today. Um, and then MOOCs, of course, Massive Open Online Courses is a, um, a very effective way to deliver um, a training, training courses for teachers and uh, uh, which are just open uh, address to, to, I mean, for free. And um, you can, you can uh, uh, deliver a lot of um, interesting topics uh, with MOOCs. Um, then we have imagination, we have uh, accessibility, it's a very important topic. Um, conflict and progress for, for progress and there's yes yeah, some are, in, in some cases we can also have some conflict we can have some challenges of course but um, when we have a growth mindset we have an, an open-minded um, approach that is just um, uh, with creativity with flexibility uh, we we can also um, overcome our challenges and uh, and try to you know to reach our goals um, and and adjust of course um, according to the different needs Okay, thank you very much uh, for your your for your inputs for uh, taking part in this this quick poll. There was just um, a sort of uh, um, uh, brainstorm. If you want to use this tool, um, you can you can um, uh, go to um, Mentimeter that you can read on top right. Uh, this is the name of the tool, which is free. is um, uh, an open. Um, source uh, web tool uh, that you can use with your with your students and you can create uh, similar activities similar um, polls or also different it's that, um, a lot of different different uh, possibilities that you can different functions that you can um, um, uh, use with your with your students just to create a little bit of innovation in your in your lesson Okay, so now I'm going to um, uh, switch to my uh, to my slides, and um, uh, I'm going to um, yeah tell you a little bit about um, a definition of a school innovation that is taken from the European Union, um, and um, it's a source of inspiration for our um, work, uh, the all the, um, uh, the research that we've been doing in in my institute, um, the uh, INDIRE, which is the National Institute for uh, Documentation innovation and research in Italy. Um, so innovation can happen at, at three levels, uh, the micro, the meso and macro level. Um, the micro level is when um, a teacher can experiment, can just try a new um, a teaching methodology, a new idea in, in, a, in his or her small context. It's just something new, but it's, it, it is just, it, it can also stay, it can be is isolated in, in a, his or her class. 
then, um, of course, um, it's a sort of viral, even if uh, viral is not the word that we like, an adjective that we like in this period, but um, the idea is to uh, make it a sort of cascade of innovation. So uh, from a single context, a single class, a single, then to the entire school. Uh, so we have the meso level uh, that is, uh, of course, um, spreading innovation within the old school or uh, outside. So with um, within uh, school networks, for example, in the same city or in different cities in different regions. So in uh, uh, trying to, of course, to expand um, innovation as much as possible. And then we have the macro level when um, innovation becomes uh, systemic and um, uh, when when there are also, um, uh, when we touch the institutional level, uh, like, um, you know, the ministries, the policy uh, makers, and then um, it becomes uh, something like um, norms, rules, or um, regulations that um, recognizes and somehow um, uh, integrate innovation within the, uh, the institutions. Uh, so we've been working a lot uh, about the, um, uh, this mechanism that um, uh, according to which uh, innovation can, can uh, take uh, place, can, can spread um, among schools. Uh, in, in particular, the work that we've been doing uh, in, in Italy, of, of course, taking inspiration from um, international models. And this is the spiral of innovation. So just some uh, prompts that can um, can can start can can happen in uh, in a single a very in, in each single context and then they become proposals prototypes but then it's important to uh, make uh, this prompt sustainable and to scale them up and in order to um, generate a systemic change so to make them real uh, integrate into the um, uh, school curriculum and then at, at a larger uh, level also uh, institutional um, at institutional level. Um, schools can, um, can, can be just islands of innovation. As I was saying, uh, just one school, one class, or sometimes one single school uh, can, can be such, uh, you know, uh, in, inspired, can, can uh, um, do um, wonderful things, but that was what uh, can, can happen in Italy uh, as well. But then um, it, it remains isolated and, um, and it's a pity, it's a shame because um, uh, it's uh, maybe the other schools in the same city or in the same region uh, won't know anything about that that innovation that's what we started that that was our starting point we wanted to uh, to have schools get out of that isolation and um, just um, uh, create a community of practice that is um, now expanding more and more in our movement that is called um, avant-garde uh, movement educational avant-garde movement uh, we have more than 1200 schools um, um, at, at our starting point was just to um let them uh, share and um, exchange um, innovative practices so that um, uh, iso uh, islands uh, won't be there anymore but just um, a circle of, of innovation among the different schools so um, this, these two different models have been taken um, from our research with Harvard Graduate School of Education, um, the, the, the Project Zero research group uh, um, uh, with, with Gardner, our Gardner, you may, uh, for sure we may know him. Um, we've been working a lot with, the, with Project Zero uh, from uh, different research uh, projects. Um, and this, this is um, um, just uh, this, this idea that has been taken from, from Project Zero research, um, uh, the uh, instant Installation model, the ecosystem, the ecological model. So, uh, innovation can come um, top down, can be just um, yes established uh, from uh, maybe by law or something coming uh, top down, or it could be um, uh, bottom up. And in this case, we have um, a more ecological approach, eco eco an ecosystem, and of course, it's something that is shared um, by uh, the teachers, by the community, and um, it can really be sustainable. But sometimes the, the two approaches can be uh, integrated. We can have some sort of inputs from, from top, from, from policymakers, from, from institutions, and at the same time, some new um, ideas coming from, from the teachers, from the community. So uh, there's no blueprint, there's no single, um, single way, uh, but of course, innovation can, can take different, um, different shapes. 
shapes and different evolution. And this is once again um, some, um, uh, this is an article um, from, by uh, David Perkins from uh, Project Zero, Harvard Graduate School of Education, talking about uh, the four legs of innovation. He says that um, in order to make um, innovation um, become um, sustainable and um, uh, in long term, uh, we need to um, uh, take into consideration these four legs. The first one is the pedagogical, pedagogical framework. Um, pedagogical framework is not a cage, but is um, a sort of uh, idea, vision that, um, um, that can be um, uh, a vision of a school, but it can also be um, a vision um, by the ministry. So some um, uh, ideas, some, uh, you know, um, for example, in, um, uh, in, 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 in Italy, we've been working a lot with CLIL, which is, which is compulsory. So this is a, a sort of framework that has, has become compulsory, but also shared by, um, by the schools. It must be flexible, but also coherent, of course, with the uh, choices that are implemented. Then leadership is the second leg. Uh, we've been uh, talking a lot about um, leadership and leader share in, in, in our institute and in our schools, because leader is um, not a, a red rose, but must be a part of the, uh, you know, of the, of, of the um, uh, community. And uh, um, with this different um, idea of the political visionary and practical visionary, so uh, trying to um, uh, put, to implement the different choices according to a vision that is also shared uh, with the community, with the school community. That's why leader share, leadership and leader share. Then we have the third, um, uh, which is the third leg, which is the community. And um, uh, that's what I've been um, talking about. So the importance to, to create a community, a community of practice and uh, try to um, get out of this isolation, but exchange practices uh, among the different schools. Um, and the fourth one is institutionalization. So when we um, when we reflect, when the school, when the the change uh, becomes uh, systemic and um, uh, is is part of the DNA of uh, of a school, and uh, and then uh, so it becomes systemic within a school, but at a larger, at a wider level. Mm, at higher level, it becomes um, a part of the uh, um, uh, national um, uh, school uh, policy, for example, and um, educational policy norms and regulation and so on. Um, and then um, also according to um, the Project Zero um, researchers, uh, these are the eight cultural forces that um, uh, move our uh, schools and also uh, are the, the drivers for innovation. Um, opportunities, the opportunities that we give our students, time that we, we need to invest to reshape and to plan according to different needs, modeling the teacher who's the, the role model for for our students in every action in every uh, both at formal and also informal level the language that we use with our students the learning environment the setting that we organize that is also a teacher itself according to the choices the organization that we we, we give that we arrange the interactions that um, we have among colleagues and with the students um, uh, and the, the, the time the talking time that we also uh, give our students um, to for, for their uh, for their interactions, the routines um, that are uh, a part of um, their comfort zone, the routine that we adopt in in. Um, in our lessons, in our classes, that uh, that can become uh, um, part of the students' comfort zone, and then um, expectations, what our students expect from us, from our lessons, that are not always the same as our learning goals, but uh, their curiosities, their expectations should be taken into account and um, uh, asked, investigated. But now, what is your attitude towards innovation? And once again, I'm going to um, the um, uh, the poll that I was that I launched before. Uh, you can um, use the same, um, just the same code. And I'm asking you another um, another question. Uh, that is, what is your attitude towards innovation? This is all, always um, taken from um, Project Zero uh, research. Uh, they say that we can have four different approaches. 
approaches, four different attitudes. One is all in. So it, an innovator, a person that just um, wants to dive into innovation fully. Uh, half in, of course, is half and half. Two in the water is just with the two in the water to taste, to, have, to, to, um, uh, to see uh, if uh, the water is too uh, cold or maybe it is right and so on. And bystander for now is just um, maybe to um, stand on, on, uh, on the sea sand and um, uh, watch and uh, look for you know more maybe uh, inputs more ideas and just for example watching some other colleagues uh, and so a sort of um, uh, approach waiting um, before you know diving into the water so I'm asking you to uh, express your uh, attitude the code is the same 78241807 uh, as you can see this is another uh, poll it's a different poll uh, that the other one was the tag cloud, the, the cloud of words, while this is just a sort of poll with the, with this, the bars and uh, you have the, um, uh, immediately the, the feedback um, about, you know, the, the number of, of participants who are voting. Uh, for now we have five all in, which is really uh, encouraging and rewarding. Then we have two half in. Uh, and then um, uh, to win the water and bystander for now. Of course, these approaches, these attitudes, uh, as um, uh, defined, as described by um, uh, Harvard uh, researchers, are not um, a right or wrong, true or false attitude. I mean, um, each uh, teacher, each researcher um, can have their own attitude. That can also be, um, it can also be a, a matter of time, maybe. Uh, and, and also linked to my character, to my, um, you know, to, to my, my um, uh, habits, because I may be um, uh, quite, uh, in my character, just um, uh, prompt to, you know, in anything apart from innovation, just um, uh, wishing to, you know, to try anything and uh, um, uh, dive uh, immediately, while I could be a little bit more shy, a little bit uh, need to, you know, to some more time to reflect, before taking decision, before um, you know, uh, starting uh, new new things. So it can be a matter of time. It could be a matter of um, uh, experience because maybe some of us need more experience, more need more time to try uh, before you know uh, adopting before. Um, uh, just um, uh, trying uh, and uh, full, full, full time, let's say. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your, your answer. So we have just one bystander for now, but uh, all in and half in uh, is, so is a very, uh, so it means, and also the thing that you are here now with me today, it means thank you so much. It means that you are, um, your attitude is, is toward innovation. And so thank you very much. Okay, now I'm going back to my slide just to show you the yes, these were the pictures about um, from from Harvard, so all in and then Alfin and two in the water and bystander for now. So just the, the different approaches uh, defined by by um, Harvard Graduate School of Education. Okay, so our case example, so what we've been doing with, with our school, with our movement, um, we wanted to create this community of practice. So we wanted to um, uh, start from what the schools, the, these uh, islands of innovation were already doing, because uh, we knew, uh, we as researchers at Indira, we knew that there were a lot of schools um, doing wonderful things, but just um, uh, staying there in their, in their island. And we wanted to, you know, to enhance these practices and to uh, spread them uh, within a, a larger community, a national community of practice. Uh, and so we um, uh, adopted um, a peer learning model with um, uh, these this, um, schools, um, let's say more expert, um, guiding um, new, uh, newly uh, recruited, to say, teachers and uh, schools within the network, um, sharing and uh, it's a sort of coaching that, that we uh, we wanted to do with the, um, expert teachers and school leaders, um, also, of course, with our um, uh, guide as well as researchers. Um, so, of course, um, using different platforms for um, um, live webinars uh, when it was possible. Of course, we started. We we had. Um, 
a lot of seminars in, in presence and face to face, uh, but we used a lot of webinars also before the uh, the pandemic um, because it was our way to uh, you know to to uh, create to to, to um, put all these teachers from different uh, regions in Italy uh, all together and and share you know their their ideas and and also coach um, and uh, and try to um, uh, to collect feedback from uh, more expert teachers. Um, and and then um, in, within this community, of course, we, uh, we follow them, we follow we, uh, the, the different, different schools um, uh, and then asking them also to share with us their products, their um, activities. Uh, we have our website um, where we publish uh, articles or other information about their activities, um, the activities that, that they do with their students uh, so that they can, can, um, um, can always be uh, you know, together at the feeling to to grow up together in this process of, of innovation. Um, the uh, movement is, as I was saying, is, is called um, Avanguard Educative, Educational Avanguard, um, and the aim is to um, uh, uh, just reshape the industrial model of schooling. This, uh, you know, traditional way of delivering top-down lessons, just, um, you know, explanation, just a lot of uh, teachers talking time, always talking, always, you know, uh, explaining while um, students listening um, in a passive mode. But we wanted to, uh, to have the students be the real protagonist, so to uh, be active, and interactive and also through collaborative activities um, and um, just implementing different teaching models, different, um, you know, methodologies. Um, so this is the, uh, you can see the, the schools are all over Italy, as I was saying, 1,000, more than 1,200. Um, and uh, the um, uh, focus is on different angles of innovation. So uh, the, the teaching, learning practices, the organizational innovation, the use of time and space, the governance of innovation, so also the leadership and leadership, as, as I was saying, because it's a, it's, um, a, a holistic uh, approach, uh, just um, uh, trying to innovate the school as a whole in all the different dimensions. And um, uh, this is our website, uh, of course, it, it's in Italian, but there's also, um, there are always uh, also um, 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 the, the, the English version, and there's also the, um, um, the materials, the majority of the materials are also in, in English. So you can find the, um, uh, the, the, the button uh, to switch into English. Um, we uh, signed a manifesto um, with, um, uh, with our schools uh, that uh, designs the horizons of innovation. Um, that uh, covers, um, the horizons cover three dimensions, three main dimensions. So uh, time, space, and methodologies. So um, as I was saying, time, um, uh, because it's uh, the, the, the fixed, uh, you know, time, lesson schedule is not always um, uh, helpful. And we've been experiencing that during this um, uh, period of uh, remote teaching and learning due to, to the pandemic. It was not helpful to have our students stay six hours, for example, in front of a screen, but we needed to reshape the uh, time, the schedule, um, and um, organize the activities in in a different way. Uh, space, I was saying, the um, learning environment uh, is, is, is a teacher uh, itself. It's, it's important how we um, reshape, how we, we organize, how we, um, uh, the different, of course, in, in, in presence, in face-to-face, -face, um, in, in a class, um, according to the activities, to the aims that, um, that we have. So um, we can reshape a range, for example, for co cooperative activities. Um, and then um, if we need to have our students and <clears throat> do some uh, informal uh, activities like reading, we can have sofa or other, uh, you know, informal um, uh, arrangement that, that can um, had them maybe relax, especially for younger students, for, for, for children, for pre-primary um, uh, school children, where they can, can relax in, in so far and at the same time um, uh, read. So it depends on how we can just, um, uh, you know, um, uh, design and we have a specific um, area in our uh, institute working at um, architecture at redesigning the architecture, the, um, the buildings of, of the school um, according to the 
different needs according to uh, the activities. So it's not a standard uh, design, but something that can be reshaped, can be arranged thing, uh, according to the different uh, needs, the different goals of the, uh, of the activities um, that we are going to implement there. And then of course, methodologies, because there's a wide range of uh, teaching methodologies apart from the front, uh, what we call the frontal lesson, the face-to-face, the, the, -face, the, the top-down lecture, no? which is just something um, uh, delivery uh, is just um, uh, passive. Students are passive and sometimes they are, they are listening, but um, and nothing will, will remain. It's not deep learning, but it's just uh, listening. Um, so we need to um, adopt different methodologies according to the different uh, you know, uh, aims um, in order to have our students um, really active, uh, really involved and engaged and, and have fun as well, because when they have fun, of course, we, we are sure that we have deep learning. And technologies, as I was saying, technologies um, are important, are fundamental, but not the, uh, the only um, key to innovation. One aspect, a very important aspect, because we know that uh, when we use technologies, uh, we can make the difference. And just, uh, I gave an example with the, the sim a simple poll, we can um, you know, just uh, activate our students' curiosity and then have them um, engage and have them um, uh, just um, you know, do something, uh, respond to, to, to an input. Um, and um, but it's important that we um, uh, use uh, the technologies um, uh, in uh, um, according to a specific methodology, a specific pedagogical framework that we have in mind. Because technology itself is just a tool; it's just um, the infrastructure. Structure, but of course, um, pedagogy and content is something that we, as a teacher, as a researcher, we need to put into uh, the uh, just the you know the, the uh, infra infrastructure. And this is a very famous uh, model, the SAM uh, model, but. Pontedura is the acronym for substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. Um, these are the different steps that. Um, and once again, this is the, the metaphor of diving, as you can see, diving into the uh, into the use of technologies, um, because uh, the first level is, is a surface level where um, there's just a substitution of the, the of the tool. So instead of a um, a blackboard, uh, you use um, a, a whiteboard, um, an interactive whiteboard, but just uh, with with a crayon. So it doesn't make any difference. It's just a substitution of uh, of, of the tool. Um, while with augmentation, you do some something more. You use, for example, the interactive whiteboard, you, you, you serve the net and you use it for, for other functions, for example, that you, you couldn't do with the, a normal blackboard. Um, and then with modification and redefinition, you have a real transformation of your teaching and learning model. Um, with these two steps, technologies become uh, an integrated part of your teaching, of your lesson, because it means that uh, you have a, a pedagogy, you have a framework, you have your, your goals, your learning goals, and you use technologies um, to reach them and to enhance at the same time your students' um, involvement and, and interest and so on. So for example, if you want your student to be active um, uh, on, on, on with technologies, you can work with blogs or with the digital storytelling or other artifact, other you know, web quest, um, uh, other tasks that require the use of technologies. But at the same time, of course, they with specific goals, specific aims in mind. So the important thing is to, um, to consider technology as, um, as a tool to be adjusted and to be um, used uh, according to our learning uh, goals. Uh, and of course, ICT is, is an important part of um, uh, avant-garde movement. Um, uh, this is the gallery. We call it the gallery of the ideas of innovation. This is in progress. In fact, there are uh, three more ideas and another one that is coming because um, uh, schools, as I was saying, is, is a bottom-up um, uh, community of practice because um, uh, the different schools that um, are imp already implementing uh, um, new ideas, new methodologies, or some other, you know, um, organizational ideas and so on, um, they uh, can um, suggest, they can just um, 
show us uh, to, to indeed to my institute to um, they can that there's a specific form um, they can fill in uh, and um, so that uh, they can suggest they can propose their their idea and uh, if we um, you know um, consider it um, relevant that can be an added value for the other schools of the movement uh, it becomes a part becomes uh, one of the ideas of the uh, of the gallery and so you can you can have some examples here like the the flipped classroom that I mentioned at the beginning, um, or for example, debate, uh, which is another important idea that is becoming more and more popular. And I know that in India as well, it's very popular. Uh, or um, uh, for example, teal, which has to do with technology as well. And it comes from um, uh, MIT in Boston, uh, especially for STEM uh, subjects, but also for uh, humanities. But in particular, I'm going to um, give you an example of one idea, uh, and, but just uh, wanted to mention this, this document which is the guidelines so for each idea um, we have this document which is called the guidelines of the idea uh, that is completely um, free online and um, uh, it uh, it is um, a document that we write uh, with our teachers we as, as researchers that indeed we write uh, together with the um, more expert um, schools the teachers and school leaders um, and so there's a sort of pedagogical um, uh, framework at the beginning, which is the theory uh, behind the idea, and then uh, the um, case study, the storytelling of the different schools, the expert schools telling uh, to the other um, network, to the network, uh, their own experience about their idea so that um, uh, all the, the other schools can, can learn from um, uh, their experience. Um, and uh, an example that I wanted to mention is a uh, link to the work that I was um, uh, mentioning at the beginning with the with Harvard Project Zero um, uh, research group. Um, this idea is called MLTV, Making Learning and Thinking Visible. Uh, so um, as, as you can see, it's, it's um, a pilot project that we, uh, before, um, you know, um, uh, adding this idea into the gallery of, uh, uh, of the movement, um, we were worked with them um, uh, directly with with the research with project zero research group um, and um, we tried we we experimented the um, project zero frameworks um, into three schools in um, uh, in Italy uh, they were a sort of pilot um, uh, and um, uh, but, but now it's it's a new idea of the gallery so mm, we are spreading uh, this this idea uh, all over the uh, the network um, yes, these are the players, Project Zero, and the, the three schools, one in the north, one in the center, one in the south, and then um, uh, the research group in, in, my, uh, in my institute. Uh, what we wanted to do was to um, uh, implement um, two um, important uh, frameworks by uh, Project Zero um, together uh, in, in one uh, um, uh, idea of the gallery uh, in uh, Italian schools and so these were our um, uh, research questions at the beginning so how uh, to uh, join these two different um, frameworks these ideas and try to uh, contextualize uh, them to um, Italian context of course and then of course the objective was to scale up um, uh, through a cascade um, model. Um, the starting point is the performative theory of understanding by Gardner, of course, our Gardner uh, at Project Zero. So the greatest enemy of understanding is coverage. Um, uh, so we, we cannot uh, cover everything in our curriculum. It's, it's important to make choice. We need to make choice. But the important thing is that uh, our students can develop um, their critical thinking skills and they can apply uh, this the, the performative theory means that they not only understand um, content concept knowledge but they also apply they can transfer so this is deep learning not the the, um, uh, the overall um, uh, aim is is deep learning of our students so how they can transfer their knowledge their understanding into other contexts and um, and so we apply this this frameworks by Project Zero. One is visible learning, and one is um, uh, making um, learning um, making thinking visible. So two different, and then we 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 uh, join them in one acronym that is making learning and thinking visible. Um, so the pillars of these uh, frameworks are the definition of a learning group, uh, a collection of persons uh, emotionally, intellectually, and aesthetically engaged. 
between so the um, uh, this peer learning model that involves teachers and students at the same time because um, a learning group is made up also of teachers because we always learn from our students so we are just a peer learning group this is a very interesting concept and then definition of documentation um, which is the practice of observing recording interpreting and sharing through different media the processes and products of learning um, it's a new idea of documentation, which is not only the exhibition of uh, the students, um, for example, products, but uh, documentation is um, uh, is a starting point uh, to reflect, to share, and to foster deep learning. Because we can reflect, we can discuss different pieces of documentation that cannot necessarily be um, perfect, not an exhibition, but also um, just um, uh, the different steps of the learning process uh, that could be notes, that could be pictures, video clips, or whatever that um, can, can be taken during a lesson, for example. And we can share and reflect on these pieces of documentation uh, with uh, among colleagues, with the teachers, uh, or with the students themselves, just um, to discuss uh, what's, what, what came out, what's, what was wrong, what can be improved, for example. So documentation just as a meta uh, cognition activity, as a, a reflection for further uh, improvement, of course. And then the most important part and the easiest, and uh, maybe um, what's, uh, I mean, it, it's real fun for, for the students, is um, the, the thinking routine. I mentioned the routine at the beginning as a part, uh, as one of the cultural forces. Uh, thinking routines and protocols are uh, fundamental in um, MLTV. Um, uh, they are uh, small steps, just um, sequences, very easy. Uh, and um, of course, uh, um, the idea is to have them repeat in, in the different um, uh, moments of, of a lesson, for example, uh, so that they become um, routine, they become uh, the student's comfort zone. Um, and so they are are, they are tools used over and over again in the classroom um, as structures, as patterns of behavior uh, that can help our students develop their critical thinking skills. It, it means that through these different steps, um, we um, guide their thinking. We, that's what we need for, for our students um, to, to, towards a thinking classroom, because sometimes we think that thinking is something, you know, um, intuitive that happens any any anyhow and uh, I mean um, like automatically but uh, we can guide thinking and as uh, Gardner says learning is a, a consequence of thinking so um, if we guide our students thinking skills we can also guide and we can also aim at uh, deep learning um, and so that's why these uh, patterns can be really helpful in in a class um, uh, this is the uh, thinking routine matrix you can find on on a project zero website, um, uh, some colorful um, uh, tables with all the different routines. Um, we also translated um, uh, part of them in, in, uh, in our book that, uh, that is in Italian that we published last year. Um, you see some, some examples of thinking routines that have um, always different uh, aims. So routines for introducing and exploring ideas, for example. So if I want at the beginning of a lesson, for example, I want to introduce a topic um, I can just uh, use one of this um, routine. One of the most common one is see, think, wonder. That is uh, really um, uh, easy and and um, uh, and effective. Um, you uh, start from um, from a picture or a video, so from a, a visual input uh, that is the starting point, the trigger for at the beginning of a, of a lesson, of a module, of a or of a topic. And then you have student, you have your students see. First of all, the first step is see. What what do you you see so list for example on a po on a uh, post-it on a, on a sticky note um, or uh, on uh, on a um, uh, computer I mean on a, on a padlet on a whatever any other tool um, then uh, you write only what you see so just um, uh, slow looking catch the items the elements that you see in in the picture uh, the second step is Think. So what and according to certain time, because each step has a certain length of time with the, you know, with the alarm clock. Then the second step is think. Now, um, what is your idea about that 
the picture, what you what you listed, what you saw. Uh, so you can now um, have your interpretation. The first step is no interpretation, just observation. Second step is interpretation and wonder what do you wonder? What are your curiosities? What are your ideas? What um, you um, what puzzles you about the picture? What you would like to further investigate? So this can can be the starting point of um, of, of a lesson of a module about a topic, and at the same time you. You can have, uh, you know, the expectations that I mentioned as one of the eight cultural forces, because when you ask them, um, what do you wonder, it means that I'm trying, I'm listening to my students' wonderings, expectations, what they expect from that lesson, from that topic that I, um, that not always may be the same as my learning objectives. And at the end of the lesson, I can go back to that poster and I give you an idea of, um, uh, of this poster uh, uh, digital as well. I can go back to that, that poster, for example, and uh, have a look again, um, uh, or, or I mean, go through the expectation, their wanderings, and see if um, uh, I can uh, further investigate, I can give more materials, for example, or if uh, all the expectations of their wanderings have been met, or maybe something is still to be, you know, investigated. These are examples in, uh, in lessons in presence, when, when it was possible to do, to apply this, um, uh, use this, this thinking routines in, in presence this is an example online. So um, uh, we used um, uh, um, a tool like a, a Padlet or a line or one of this, you know, the, this shared this um, board um, uh, and uh, and then the students you see uh, the the different the three steps see think wonder so they um, they could um, you know uh, put their sticky note with their observation with their um, uh, output uh, about you know what you see uh, of course this is an Italian uh, but uh, you can do it in any language um, what you think and then what you want and of course what comes out is, is the discussion as well because after you know giving them time to to post their sticky note and then you can discuss with them and um, you, you can have really um, interesting and engaging conversation to start of, of course for and then go um, forward for, for, for your, your lesson. Um, so this was just an example of uh, our activities and um, one example of uh, one idea of uh, our gallery of um, avant-garde uh, movement, but uh, as you as you saw, there, there are so many other ideas, and it's still in in uh, in progress. Um, and um, uh, now we have some more time for for questions. And uh, I would like to, I mean, I will be happy if you have uh, any uh, questions, any uh, curiosities, and uh, uh, will be happy to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ciglianotto. So now we are, the floor is open for questions from your side. Um, I don't know if there's some uh, partners that have some questions for you, um, but there is some question from the attendees on YouTube. So I have been gathering them and we have a couple of questions. So I might start with one of them. Uh, our partners can, can think about their questions in the meantime. So one of the students attending wanted to know how to innovate in an educational environment where the teaching staff considers innovation not necessary. This is a very good question. Uh, well, uh, yes, the, the the key, as I was saying at the beginning, you know, when we have the, a grow, growth mindset should be, of course, uh, you know, the starting point. But um, we have also, also in Italy, of course, we have teachers that can be, let's say, um, uh, resistant and reluctant and think that innovation is not necessary. But sometimes um, it, it is a matter of, um, you know, um, uh, uh, shadowing, you know, because if if they they have some some colleagues, for example, that, and we um, uh, experience that in, in different cases. So sometimes they um, uh, you know they were reluctant, but then they they saw that uh, from uh, you know the colleague in uh, in just next door, next uh, in, the, in the same school, they. Um, great results, maybe a lot of enthusiasm and also from, from parents because um, also the, you know, when I, when I talk about the community, the holistic appro approach, um, it means that also families are, are involved. So um, 
sometimes, for example, in ideas like um, you know debate, no, which is um, this sort of public speaking and so on. Um, uh, families are invited to, for example, to watch uh, the, 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 the student there, their children uh, debating, and so it's also you know um, uh, um, um, positive feedback that, that comes from from the community, from the families, from from you know from uh, um, the entire uh, educational community. So in this case, sometimes um, it, is, it is just um, uh, watching uh, the, you know, it can be the bystander for now uh, attitude. So just uh, giving them the time to uh, maybe um, uh, to watch some other experiences, and uh, of course, the role of the um, uh, of the the school leader is important in those cases. So, um, just organizing when when the when the school leader, for example, um, can organize you know events or um, just um, open the uh, can can open the you know the school to other initiative to international, for example, initiatives or so um, providing opportunities for teachers to um, to observe, to shadow, to 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 catch some other. You know, ideas maybe from other schools or from um, uh, you know the international dimensions for schools abroad and so on, um, and give them time, hoping that this could be the uh, you know the the solution. Of course, there's no uh, there's no right answer, and uh, but uh, yes, then there may be challenges. But you know, um, a good and inspired leader uh, adopting leadership, leadership and leadership, and involving the communities and maybe you know um, showing results showing evidence that could convince and that could uh, uh, open up the I mean hopefully uh, the you know the, the door to, to innovation. Um, thank you Letizia for your answer I will go with the second question from YouTube we have also some partners that have already posed their questions too so Amrit Kaur is asking as nowadays it's difficult to attain students' attention, which innovative ways can help us to capture their attention? Well, this is another, you know, <laughs> so uh, question, I mean, uh, that opens up a lot of uh, um, uh, different scenarios and different uh, answers because uh, to capture, yes, it's, it's very difficult to, to capture our students' attention nowadays. They are so, they have so many, um, you know, inputs and um, uh, they, they know everything, they can do anything with technology and so on. It's, it's always difficult. Um, but I think that, that, of course, there's no single, there's no blueprint, there's no single uh, answer. Uh, it depends. It depends on the context. It depends on the activities. Uh, of course, technologies can help a lot. Um, so uh, we can, um, uh, you know, mix uh, uh, and and use some some uh, you know activities like polls that like the ones that I showed you, or maybe use um, uh, like, like you know um, Kahoot or other uh, other tools for quizzes that are always um, very um, uh, are fun for for them. And also, what I think it's it can be um, can be uh, useful is to um, uh, to make them um, uh, the real protagonist to make them feel um, uh, you know like um, teachers. Um, we have a very important study, a research uh, by um, John Hattie, the uh, Australian uh, scholar, um, uh, working on, on visible learning and making a ranking um, of um, the strategies that um, have the strongest impact on, on deep learning. And peer teaching is uh, at the top, uh, the highest um, rank. It means that when the students uh, feel the responsibility to, to be teachers themselves and to teach, to show uh, their knowledge, their competence or what else to, to, to their peers, um, they, they feel, you know, uh, first of all, you have deep learning because they need to master that knowledge and um, uh, before uh, delivering to, to, to their peers. And they also feel the responsibility in the field, the enthusiasm and um, the curiosity to do something different, a role that is not uh, their, their, their own, I mean, the common role, their students. But in their case, if they feel, um, you know, important somehow, um, it, it can make the difference. But of course, there's no there's no only answer it can you know that it can vary from from different contexts different situations but this could help in my opinion um thank you so um we go on to the next question that comes from one of our partners which is uh 
Honey Chitkara from Chitkara International School. So first of all, she's thanking you for a very nice uh, lecture. Also for suggesting Menti website, uh, which can be used for objective paper and also for a con uh, formative assessment. But she wants to know if you can share one or two innovative assessment tools for subjective paper uh, cumulative assessment. Uh, for uh, I mean to to correct um, the uh, I don't know I'm not sure if I understood the, the, the question uh, for um, open uh, open uh, formative assessment but for open uh, um, composition essays so sort mm -hmm. of that I don't know if it, it, this is the yes. question. Technologies are the web tools are so many, uh, and um, uh, in particular during the uh, lockdown, I mean during the, the this pandemic, a real a real boom of, of different tools. Um, there are a lot of um, um, interesting and very helpful tools for um, uh, for um, uh, correct giving a feedback. There's one Kaizina is called that just comes up to my mind. It's called Kaizina, but also uh, the okay. um, uh, also Google the Google tools, for example, that give the opportunity to give a feedback um, to the students' essay or you know composition in uh, writing okay. uh, or also in in speaking. So the, the the teacher and this can be very effective. The teacher can give a feedback back um, uh, recording uh, an audio an audio feedback an audio file um, just next to a single paragraph and next to a single part of the of the essay and say well here you need to do that and so on so it could be uh, a different way to um, you know formative feedback um, uh, that is uh, individual uh, so personalized but at the same time engaging because you have technologies and also a strong impact uh, and also um, something you know um, uh, to do uh, in that particular part to improve for example the, the essay but there are so many tools and also you know the, mm -hmm. the uh, technologies are always uh, you know increasing more and more yes i think you have just answered to one of our questions you actually spoke about this boom in uh, educative tools during the pandemic so Professor Manayat was asking if you could let us know some innovations for online education during this pandemic. So maybe you could repeat those tools you just mentioned so we can write them down in the chat because I, I don't think yeah. I got properly all. Yes, um, this one is, is called Kaizina, K-A-I-Z-E-N-A. Kaizina is one just just uh, comes up to my mind. But so many. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Kaizina. Just for yes, for um, peer feedback. Uh, but then also I was saying the the, the tool for Google um, for yes um, the. Mm -hmm. The tools, the explosion, really the boom of, uh, of the tools or platform. For example, um, what I found so um, uh, relevant and so um, uh, you know important during this period when it was uh, and it is still so difficult to, to travel. I mean, um, it's still you know we, we are starting to travel, but in Italy, for example, the uh, situation is unfortunately um, getting worse again. Um, but uh, the, the tools like you know Google Earth or um, all the, um, uh, the the radio one one tool that I, that I really would like to suggest is called Radio Garden. Radio Garden is is really wonderful, especially for um, language learning, uh, uh, which is one of my main research areas. Um, uh, the um, uh, Radio Garden. Um, uh, if you just Google uh, Radio Garden, it's um, uh, based on mm -hmm. Google Earth. Uh, then you have this uh, world, this dessert just um, popping up, and then you can click on um, a green dot and uh, you travel uh, virtually to that place uh, on, on the earth. And then at the same time, you, you can um, hear the uh, radio being broadcast uh, at that, um, in that moment in, uh, in that place. So it's, it's a way to, you know, um, travel uh, virtually, a source of, you know, um, uh, uh, it, it, because we, we cannot travel so so easily unfortunately but at the same time you can um, uh, you can have an immersion into the culture for example of that place uh, and to the language because you can improve your pronunciation you can uh, listen to the you know to the uh, to the facts uh, that, that are happening in that place and of course for language learning it can be a very uh, interesting tool but as I was saying there's, there's so many uh, that it's impossible to follow them because well every day you have something new and uh, uh, 
so just you need, uh, um, yes, I was, I was saying a flexible and a growth mindset, and just the time to and the passion, uh, that was one of the keywords that you, uh, you added, you put in the cloud at the beginning, just the passion mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to, to take time and to serve the net and then to, uh, you know, um, look for um, the, the tool that could be uh, the, the, you know, the suitable for, for that particular occasion, for the particular um, uh, learning aid. Um, so we have another question from one of our partners from Chitkara International School. Uh, this time is Prabjot Kal. She uh, wants to thank you again for such a wonderful and informative session. She would like to know if you can suggest ways in which a teacher could spark an innovative bent of mind in the students at an early stage of education. Uh, you mean pre-primary, maybe pre-primary, infant, mm -hmm. you know, nursery school? Okay. Well, in this um, at this stage, um, if, let's say that it's uh, somehow easier because kids are, you know, children are um, uh, so prompt to, you know, to to, to catch uh, any uh, any sort of uh, of innovation, any sort of activity, and um, they learn so so fast. Um, but of course, I would suggest to use a lot of um, uh, games. Of course, gamification, game-based learning is uh, fundamental, uh, is, is a, a key issue in uh, at any stage, but in particular, of course, um, uh, pre-primary, primary, primary uh, is important. For example, uh, talking with, um, I mean, we, always with technologies, we have, uh, we are working in, in my institute also in um, uh, towards a, you know, within a particular project that is called uh, um, uh, virtual immersive world. So we have um, an immersive um, uh, world, let's say a sort of second life um, where um, uh, they can uh, can surf, they can go there with their um, avatar and uh, 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 have fun. So play games that are also learning games with, um, for example, for language, for, for you know, for activities they can again do. And we have, for example, uh, um, uh, schools in, in Italy also um, uh, pre-primary and primary school where um, the teacher because of course it's um, uh, complicated for for the kids to to enter with their own avatar that's something that maybe uh, older students can do uh, and, and they do it they they you know they create their own avatar they change uh, dress and and hair and so on and uh, uh, do different activities and also games and uh, language games and so on uh, but for um, um, very young uh, students um, what our teachers do uh, is that they uh, enter with the, I mean, the teacher enter, enters the, the, this virtual world with his or own avatar, um, and the students are in, uh, um, uh, are in, in, um, in class, uh, and they watch uh, what the teacher uh, does uh, within this world, this virtual world through the interactive whiteboard that the shares the, um, uh, you know, the, the projector and, uh, uh, and but they uh, they can interact because if, for example, um, when the, um, you know, the, the, the interactive whiteboard is touched so they can go there and touch and, uh, you know, play games um, uh, in, in, that, in that world or some other time they, they just the teacher can um, uh, can ask questions they respond or riddles or guessing games and um, uh, so it's something that is of course a strong innovation a use of technologies but at the same time um, uh, allow students to be um, in, in in group in in class and react to the teachers yes, uh, input online in uh, yeah and and have fun of course with different games different sort of games but this is just an example there are so many um, thank you very much, Letitia. We still have one last question, if you're not too tight with time. No, um, no this comes from, from our YouTube stream. So uh, one of our students was, say, was saying that teaching methodologies are not perfect by themselves. So how can innovation bring out a perfect methodology to teach English in a multilingual society? Maybe your clear background can can help in this question? Uh, yes, this is another very big question. I mean, yes, of course, uh, even uh, first of all, because methodologies are so many. Uh, and so that there's no, not only one. In language learning, um, the, uh, the key and so clear, uh, of course, um, the key idea, the key issue is to have students uh, be, uh, to have students engage in authentic tasks. I think that task, um, you know, task-based, task-based learning can really make the difference, can 
really be can really be effective when you um, assign when you organize tasks that can be also um, in um, can be um, uh, carried out in groups, for example, through collaborative uh, activities. Um, you, uh, when you uh, organize tasks, it means that students feel have the idea that they need to use the language for meaningful purposes. It's not only the grammar, it's not only vocabulary that they need to remember, they need to you know to memorize. But it's of course uh, we we all know that uh, that this is the rule of forgetting. You know that um, uh, uh, the famous linguist Krashen uh, mentioned. So that when you do something, but you are not concentrating, you're not focusing on learning, you learn any anyway, and you, you reach deep learning because you, you forget, you, you are not focused on learning itself. And this is what task-based task learning does. So when you are focused on a task, on what you need to do, that is something authentic, that could be a poster, that could be a project, um, a simple PowerPoint, or you need to uh, build a website or a web quest or whatever that is to be shown and presented, for example, to, to, to the rest of the class and to the other group. Uh, to the teachers. It means that you are not so focusing on the language, but on the task, on what you need to do, which is um, uh, meant to be authentic, is tangible, is something that is relevant, and um, it can it can help. But of course, as I was saying, is that it's not uh, only there's no one way. Of course, there's so many many different uh, you know methodologies. But this can can be a, a good uh, uh, idea, in my opinion. Sorry, I muted. So, Leticia, again, we had uh, many comments uh, from our YouTube uh, attendees and also from our partners. Thank you very much. It was a very insightful session. They learned a lot from you. We also have some repetitive questions. They want to know some uh, innovative tools to teach online, especially for younger children in primary and secondary education. I don't know if you have something to add on that. Well, if yeah, there are, as I was saying, there are so many um, tools, but if I, I, I mm -hmm. this is my email, so I, I can encourage all the participants to write me if they have um, specific uh, questions and specific um, uh, curiosity, I can, uh, because we, are, we also have um, uh, the experience from, from our teachers that, uh, you know, with the, we follow them during the, the period of uh, the pandemic and we're still, uh, you know, um, uh, following all the teachers in Italy, trying to help them and we have so many experiences with different uh, mm -hmm. tools. So um, if you have um, uh, specific questions, I, I will do my best to, to answer them by email. Yes. Yeah. We also could see some, some interest uh, for, from some professors and students that wanted to know more about the projects you, you carry on at Indira. So if we can then perhaps share Indira's website or, or your email address, that, that would be perfect. So they can ask sure. you more specific questions. Of course, of course, yes. The um, this is my my main email, uh, the official email. It's it's here on this last last slide. Um, uh, if uh, Indire the website Indire, if you just Google Indire, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's it's one of the first uh, hits. But yes, once again, any any follow any further you know um, curiosity, I will be happy to to answer. And uh, of okay. course, uh, any possible cooperation as well, because our movement is um, at the moment is national. <laughs> I mean, is uh, a national network of schools, but uh, we we have um, uh, a lot of uh, you know um, connections like uh, the, the the projects with uh, the, the uh, project zero. I mean, we have uh, we are open, mm -hmm. of course, to international cooperation. So uh, who knows? Uh, it may be the starting point for any any possible link, any possible uh, joint uh, project. It would be great. Okay, so I don't see any more questions from our YouTube. Uh, channel. So I actually ha had a question myself. So maybe to wrap it up, we also, I mean, we want to thank you. It's very, uh, it's an honor to have such expertise within our consortium. I had a question regarding some topic you touched at the beginning of your lecture, uh, the top down or bottom up approach to innovation. So maybe because I, I don't have such a background in education, but when I think about any substantial innovation in education, all the advances that come to my mind are top down. So stemming from government decisions or like education policies. So could you state or could you name a successful example of bottom up innovation in education? 
Yes. Well, first of all, uh, this um, our educational avant-garde movement is an example of bottom-up. But I can also mention mm -hmm. um, uh, the CLIL uh, experience in, in Italy because CLIL okay. in Italy, um, you know, content language integrated learning is compulsory in uh, has been compulsory since 2010 by law. Uh, so there's a top-down uh, reform introducing mm -hmm. CLIL as uh, you know by law in. Um, specific classes, particularly in the fifth class of upper secondary school, and so that's compulsory. But at the same time, and long before the uh, 2010, um, a lot of teachers have been experiment had been experimenting CLIL um, without any <laughs> any lows. I mean, they just um, uh, they were they were happy, they were eager to uh, you know to to try this uh, new method methodology content in, uh, you know, disciplinary content in, in a foreign language, uh, and, and also um, not necessarily in uh, upper secondary school where it is compulsory. So, for example, nowadays as well, we have a lot of teachers in um, uh, primary and um, lower secondary um, uh, ex experimenting CLIL um, without any uh, obligation, no, because uh, the obligation is only for upper secondary school. So this is a real uh, good example of matching the top down level and the bottom up, because it means that even if we have a lot of challenges uh, uh, in, in Italy about clear, clear training and so on, but um, uh, teachers really like uh, this methodology and find it, um, uh, you know, um, effective and uh, um, uh, engaging. And, and, and so they, I mean, they, um, uh, they used to uh, experiment it before, long before uh, it became low. So uh, low was just a sort of institutionalization. Um, and so it can be mentioned as an example of uh, top down and bottom up approach together. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for such insightful presentation as, um, as we just said. And uh, now I will give the floor to our colleagues at Inter uh, Chitkara International School uh, to conclude this third Edu Reform Expert Talk with you. Uh, one of our special guests. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm from Chutkar and uh, I think this uh, session can go on and on. Um, so because it's so insightful and innovation is the need of the hour. Um, so thank you, Dr. Natizia. On behalf of Edu Reform team member, I would like to begin by extending a heartful gratitude to Dr. Natizia for rendering such a fabulous opportunity to all of us. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you so much. A pleasure and honor for me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And, and Dr. Letizia, I think we have learned about the inventive teaching learning model. And indeed, um, you, were, you intelligibly explained uh, thoroughly the model through a wonderful case example from an Italian school, highlighting strength, challenges of reshaping the traditional top-down education format in terms of time, set, setting, learning environment, organization, methodologies and strategies, and a very good example of bottom-up. Um, the way you just um, discussed of for CLIL. So, and even the Mentimeter.com, the SAMR model, the MLTV, that was so interesting. And I think uh, all the partners, the educators and the students uh, would agree with me. And I think the thinking routine matrix that you shared with us would be a lot of help to all, all of us because it will really create an innovative bent of mind in our students. And I'm positive that this session has been fruitful for the audience as well as they would certainly implement the learnings from this session in the practical or professional life. Thank you, Dr. Letizia, once again. And thank you, partners, educators, and students for attending the session with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Letizia. A big grazie. <laughs> From, from India, Grazie a voi. And thank you thank to the you. partners Bye. and to the students thank for um, for attending this third third expert talk. And uh, I would invite to everyone the students if they want to follow us in our social um, social medias because we will soon have another expert talk. So stay tuned for another expert talk. And thank you again. Thank you, Dr. Chinganato. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
right? 